Good. All right, welcome everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. We got Jason here and uh, Jason is going to tell us all about the church, where he's from and what he does. A uh, little bit about yourself, Jason, and your mission and background. Yeah, so uh, my name is Jason. I work at Cedar Creek Church in uh, Northwest Ohio. We are a multi-site church. We have six locations. Uh, my title is uh, executive project manager. So I work closely with our executive team and our executive pastor specifically um, on high level projects and also working with all of our teams on strategy uh, rollout and ways that we can collaborate on different projects. So we're not too siloed across our ministries and teams. Now, that's an interesting role. I'm sure you're dealt a lot of challenging tasks to say the least. Is it all like dedicated towards tech or their like logistics, construction? Like give us an idea of the like the average couple of months for you. What kind of projects are you taking on? Yeah, so it's mostly driven in tech uh, space. So I'm not mm -hmm. the IT director. I'm also not uh, like the database director, but I work heavily in our tech environment. So working with teams, hearing kind of what their problems are or solutions that they're looking for. And I think of ways to integrate that with software or with the current systems we have in place. Um, driving people to, to software we already have in place, but also expanding the software we have in place to serve multiple teams or multiple ministries. I think it's really easy to get software or systems, uh, get tech that solves the business side of the church. And sometimes we forget about the ministry side of the church or ways that it can also impact them. So I'm constantly looking across the platform to see how the tech we already have can impact people at all levels and all areas of our organization. You know, it's really forward thinking to have a position that's focused on that. You don't see a lot of churches do it. What, what do you think prompted your church to elevate you to that position? Was it just seeing like a bunch of different opportunities or a bunch of different issues? Like where did the genesis of creating that spot come? Because you just, that's not normal. You just don't see that type of role in uh, larger organizations like yours. Yeah, I'd like to think that it's due to our, our staff size, but also our guest size. So mm. we are multi-site across six different sites. We see about 5,000 people on the weekend and another 16 to 1,800 online. So we're not, you know, we're not small by any nature, but we do have a pretty slim staff. So we have about 90 staff uh, with us uh, and only a portion of those are central support. So we're constantly kind of like grinding the gears and churning out new things. So one of the things that I think I bring to the table for our team is how can we do uh, a lot more with what we have without trying to reinvent the wheel every time? So a ministry might come up with an idea and it's like, oh, actually that solves, if we do it right, if we develop it right, it actually solves two other problems we were having versus trying to re multiple ideas for different teams. We can actually kind of roll everybody into one. What I think that does really well or serves our staff well is like, now if me or two other tech-minded staff know how to solve the problem with this one thing. We don't have to learn three different things that are rolling out. We actually just learn the one thing. And when people have problems, we're like, yep, we're all we're all in the same the same gear. Yeah, it reminds me of almost what a like chief technology officer would do. And so it, like because you often see like director of X at a church, like yeah. director of IT, uh, there's not really a role where it's strategy which it sounds like a lot of yours is where, you know, yep. in a, a business organization, you'd have the chief technology officer who yep. thinks about strategy and then thinks about execution, but then also has direct reports when it comes to the execution. It sounds like really that that's kind of like what your role is. Yep. Yeah. In a lot of ways, it's strategy. Uh, I'm in a lot of meetings. Uh, so I always try to, uh, any season like this season right now, I'm in a lot of meetings. So I'm I recognize I need to thin that back out to get some more white space, get some more development time. Mm. Um, but meetings are also really important because there's something that those teams need from a strategy perspective. So on the flip side, I could be like, 
I don't, I can't be in any meetings. I'm way too busy, right? But they're not hearing some points of those strategy. And ultimately I can't get back to the development table, understanding the problem more if I'm not a part of it. So it really is a balance of like some seasons, there's a lot of meetings and you don't wanna stay in that season long, but you also don't wanna discredit being invited to meetings or being a part of them and hearing the problem uh, because you, you're gonna start developing platforms or software or introducing systems and have lost complete touch of what is how it's being used or what it's actually needed for. Yeah. We, okay. So a season when you're in a lot of meetings, uh, is that typically related to like maybe a new campus opening or a new initiative or a new building being built? Like where do you see the the meeting spot? Or is it around a certain time of season, like Christmas? I mean, that's always very stressful for a church staff. Is it? Yeah. Is it around events or is it around uh, particular projects? Yeah, it's almost always around a project, an initiative, or a campus, right? It's always mm -hmm. something's coming up. The nice thing about my position or my role is typically those seasons are off peak from events. So let's say you're opening a campus in June. My peak for that environment was probably a year ago. Uh, Christmas is always coming and December is always busy. And lots of my friends and coworkers are like, oh my gosh, Christmas is here and must be totally busy. I'm like, my busy was November prepping for Christmas. Like it, it's always trying to get out ahead of it. Um, I also like to think like if I do my job uh, really well, I've gotten my stuff sorted out and built ahead enough that those who are doing the ministry, who are connecting with people have something already in front of them. I can always make tweaks along the way and we can adjust and uh, slide the scale in a little bit better to serve them well but I'm not rushing to get it built while they're rushing to use it. And then we're all rushing because it's Christmas. Uh, we try to back everything up, back all of our dates up as best we can. It doesn't always happen, but I like to, I like to talk as if it does. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I always like somebody who's just biased towards action. <laughs> Sounds like you are my type yeah. of speed. That's yeah. great. Well, okay. Multi-campus. You said you had six locations or is it seven? Six. Yep. Six. Uh, a lot of our listeners are multi-campus, and I often ask this question on, with the podcast interviews. Now, I, you know, usually I'm having kidsmen directors come on. We've had IT directors come on, and we ask, like, hey, what challenges are you seeing in your organization today? And, uh, you know, we could take that question down to, like, the specific ministry level or, or higher level. I think given your role, it, I'd be interested to hear, like, the challenges you face with software. Is it just like with a 90 person staff, is it just hard to manage all the software tools that you're utilizing? Like, is that a challenge you're having? Uh, I, I'm curious to kind of just delve into the software aspect of it a little bit and feel free to take it somewhere else if you want to. Yeah, I would honestly, when you first asked the question, what types of problems are you facing? I would say it's a similar type of problem that every church faces, and that's uh, the depth of our team or the number of volunteers we have. Like, that's just always going to be a tension. And yeah. that impacts me from a software perspective. Hmm. Um, for example, uh, one of our sites is kind of struggling with getting new families checked in, the speed at which it takes. So like, man, we, we we're really holding a value to get people back in the doors and back in the ministry area as fast as possible while another team is valuing the amount of data we get from them while they're standing in front of us. What's their name? What's their phone number? Like some really important data. We could do clipboards and paper, but then we have to have somebody enter that data. We could go straight and enter it right into an iPad by handing the family an iPad. Either way, there's a length of time that it takes to get the job done. That's a difference between the value one team is holding versus uh, another team is holding. If we had all the volunteers in the world, we could probably make that really quick because they could walk with them. They could, uh, one person could be getting their kids checked into the room while another one's still entering the data. The truth is we struggle with that. So that impacts me because now I have to create a system to help merge those two values together. Mm -hmm. How do we create something that is fast to get them into the room, but we're also collecting what we need to create a safe environment but also an environment where we can market well to that family and invite them to the next thing because we know who they are. So uh, the truth is that's really where our pinch point is, is, is kind of just the depth, who, how many volunteers do we have? How are we recruiting? How are we getting people involved? I think it's, it's common for uh, tech-minded staff to have software problems where they're like, 
I can't keep up. I have a lot of demands. There's a lot of different variables. One thing that uh, I'm proud of uh, with our team is we keep looking at ways to innovate the platforms we have instead of introducing new platforms. Well, this software does something really cool. Let's get it. Well, people are raving about this. Let's get it. And instead, we always kind of come back to the table and we're like, what do we have at our disposal already? Instead of creating one more thing that we all have to learn, that we all have to adapt to, that now we have to remember where it's all at. So if we have a platform that's doing something really well, we try to implement it. We also don't want to break that platform. So we're not going to force things in that don't fit. And we might have to adapt and get a new software platform or add a software platform. But there's always the mindset of how can we maximize what we're having because uh, we have the environment we do, which I think serves us really well. It actually takes software off the table as being the issue most days. Yeah, less is more. <laughs> Addition yes. by subtraction. Uh, yes. You know, and no one ever gets rewarded doing taking something away. It's like, oh, we're going to add complexity. And you're usually like cheered for that. So I, I, I like that mindset. What I love too about the check-in that you mentioned is safety is huge. Uh, I, I mean, that goes without saying safety is yep. huge. It's one of the things that we preach in our webinars is like, what check-in are you using? Because not only is it about safety, it's about the experience too. Yep. You want families to get in the door and have their kids into the kids' men area as safely and have a positive experience in doing with that. And that's really threading the needle, right? It, it, yep. That's like, oh yeah, yeah, you could do that. You're like, well, wait a second for uh, points you've illustrated. Yeah. All right. Tell tell our audience are you is are you using planning center? Are you using like tidely check in? Is it something you guys built like on an execution side? What 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 are you doing for the check in? Yeah, for our people management software, we use Rock RMS. Yes, so, Rock's amazing. Open yeah, source. So that's that's our it's open source. There's a lot of people investing in it, which is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, we're constantly benefiting from benefiting from each other, and probably, I mean top tier above anybody else is the community. Like people are constantly investing in one another. It doesn't feel competitive. Everybody's trying to make everybody better. Um, yeah. So I could, I could open source. We all know open source. So you could throw something out there and we could benefit from each other's open so source code. But actually mm -hmm. Rock RMS has created um, a community that's open source and thoughts and open source and ideas. I could put something out there. It's like, hey, here's my process for check-in. Can someone help me? And I'll get two or three people that'll be like, hey, why don't you try doing this? And it's like, love that. So it's not just open source in the technical sense. It's also open source and knowledge and, and uh, just educational sense. And I love it. Yeah. Shout out to the Rock team. And also, if you haven't gone to the event out in Phoenix, I'd highly suggest that for all of our listeners. They yeah, have an it's event. It's, 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 and you get to tap into that community aspect at yep. the event. So. That's great. We do use okay. Planning Center too. We use Planning Center for scheduling. So um, Rock also does scheduling. One of the reasons that we use Planning Center for scheduling is we actually build, lots of churches are familiar with Planning Center for your weekend services, music and production specifically, and kind of building item layouts. We do that in all ministries of our church. So we do that in students, kids, next steps, growth track, baptism. We do that everywhere. So we provide all of our volunteers uh, resources and empowerment for the weekend. Here's a small group guide. Here's what we're going to go over here. Here's the baptism devotional. Whatever it is that they need to be successful for the weekend, we provide that through Planning Center when we're scheduling them. So uh, there are probably ways to do that um, through Rock in different ways, but the way that you create a schedule or a plan in Planning Center is what they do uniquely well. And that that's an example of it's like it's not worth forcing that into what Rock provides. Planning Center does that well. So we've separated those two platforms. We still schedule through Planning Center and we use Rock pretty much for everything else because of its capability and community. Yeah. Play to the software strengths, right? It's like, hey, what is this software good at? Yep. Uh, and then evaluate ease of use. Uh, I mean, that's even I mean, what we're doing for the playlister team when we're evaluating software for our company is like, yeah, can we use this? How can we use this? How user-friendly is it? What is, what's the job to be done here? Uh, so I 100%. like that you're take, taking that approach. So uh, uh, with 
churches evolving over the next few years, I, I think what we've seen, in my personal opinion, is church, churches embracing more enterprise enterprise level software. How do you see the church evolving in the next few years? Is it adopting more software tools to help solve problems? Or is it like the way that campuses are built? Is it something in the physical world, uh, the digital world? Like, uh, how, how, do you, how do you see like in the next 10 years, if you look at how churches evolve, where, where do you think it's going? Oh, that is that is that is a loaded question in 10 years <laughs> so far. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, three years, five years. Oh my I, gosh. I'm, I'm just always curious, like, Where'd your mind go? Was it like, oh yeah, software do this? Or it's Here, like, hey, I've, I've seen churches built out in this way. That's really yeah. easy to walk in and out. Like, where, where'd your mind go? Here's, here's my off the cuff idea. I'm certainly not an expert in this, but I do feel relationally connected with a lot of people in the community uh, in churches and uh, these roles similarly across different churches. Here's what I think is happening. One, I don't think any of us have it figured out, period. Uh, that's probably a bold statement, but I don't think any of us fi have figured out what technology, software, digital looks like for our environments. Hmm. I think um, 2020 kind of pushed us all to start figuring it out or helped us jump off the ledge. So there was a lot of, I mean, even if you just go down to paper, we all printed a lot. There was some churches had already made the move not to print as much as they had. COVID came through, 2020 hit. A lot of people stopped and we all moved digital. We tried to resource people from home. Some people haven't come back to paper. So that's just one piece of the pie where it's now you're just far enough removed where you're like, do we reintroduce paper? Do we not? <laughs> right. What are we doing? You have some churches that have invested in the rock community. You have other churches that have built out their own because they have a plan for where they want to go. You have other churches who started to plan their own software and have reeled back and they're like, wait, let's undo this and let's go somewhere else. Hmm. development costs a lot of money. So I think you're watching us all in a season of trying to figure it out. Um, and I think it's important to take a step. Like um, it's, it's okay not to want to be the first one, uh, but we've got to keep moving together. And what I think the church community offers best is our ability to work together. Uh, we're all better together because of it we're all moving in this forward. So if we're all open to learning from each other, I think in three years, we'll be somewhere different than today. I don't, I don't know where that will be. And I often face that where someone will say, where do you, where do you want it to be in two years when we do this? And I'm like, I want to take a step today. I don't know where hmm. we want to be in two years, but I want to take a step today because this isn't working. Yeah. Um, whatever this is. Uh, so I think that's my short answer to not being the expert in this area is we don't, none of us, none of us know, none of us have this figured out, but if you're willing to move and willing to learn together, I think we'll end up somewhere really cool together in three years. Yeah. I like the idea. What I've noticed with the community aspect, not only at rock, but uh, another shout out to like uh, CITN, which yeah. uh, that that has been we that was at Granger in Indiana yep. last year. This year it's in uh, Palm Palm Beach. West Palm Beach, yeah, yeah, West Palm Beach. That is a great event where I just see a lot of like-minded people uh, uh, really getting into like a flow state with each other. Like, here's what we've seen work. Here's what yep. doesn't work. Uh, that's been fantastic. So the community aspect and what you're you're hitching your wagon to in this conversation, I can totally re relate to because I, I see how well it works. I've been to those events and man, yeah. uh, the ideas that come from there are really fantastic. That's how we've gathered <laughs> a lot of good feature requests is just going to visit customers at the, uh, these events and like sitting down with five of them and just talking through like, here's all the problems that we have. Like, oh, okay, we could write some code to solve that. Yeah, that's uh, so, that's so good. Yeah, that's great. All right. So fi final question, Jason. And this is because I'm a huge bookworm. Uh, as you can see, this is just a little section of my library. Uh, and I've got a problem. I, li I like books. I buy a lot of books. What do you find? What book do you find yourself recommending to folks? Or are you giving out as a gift or going back to like, what, what, what pops to the mind? Oh my gosh, I'm going to look it up. I I honestly, I don't read books. I listen to books. I'm a book listener. That so counts. I have my I, anybody I'm talking to, <laughs> I got, oh my got gosh. friends the same way. 
it's like, oh yeah, 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 I get it. Like some people with longer commutes, it's like I'm burning through books. I've got a buddy of mine, uh, our daughters are friends and he he's he reads back and forth on the way he's, he's a surgeon and he's just reading constantly. And he keeps yep. up to date on uh, Goodreads. So we can always talk about what he's li- listening to in the car. There are uh, two books. One uh, that I just, that I've read multiple times. And that's The Prodigal God by Tim Keller. Love that. That's yeah. a highly yes. recommend. And then I just started, I just finished Upstream, but I'm now working on Do Hard Things. Um, I think it's really easy for me to get stuck in, um, that feels really hard or that feels like something I don't want to accomplish today, but the idea of doing hard things to achieve them and to move on to the next. And every time you don't, you do something that's hard, it's it's hard the next time. And the next obstacle that's on that level isn't hard. Um, that's something that I need to be challenged with. So that's what I'm starting now. And I'll let you know how it goes after the end. Do hard things, but the prodigal God, love that. Yeah, do hard things. I'll put that on the reading list. I, I That was a mass uh, a message from our pastor a few weeks ago. Is just questioning oh, no the con- congregation of like, when's the last time that you did something hard? And then he yep. equated that back to uh, scripture. And it was really, really thought provoking. And I think it created like a conversation amongst our family afterwards that was really impactful because that's where you're uncomfortable is where you're learning yeah uh, and t- you're doing something hard when that's the case right so it's like hey if you're just laid back in easy mode you're not learning you're not pushing yourself uh but it, there's a paradox in it right <laughs> you're like hey i want to be comfortable uh yep. and that's the default mode so the yep. paradox in being is like pushing yourself to be uncomfortable that's well, it sounds like from our conversation, there's Jason, as like, I'm calling you the chief technical officer at your church. Uh, you, you're constantly being pushed <laughs> to be uncomfortable and solve all problems. So kudos to you, my man. Thank you so much Thank for you. taking the time this afternoon yeah. to talk to us. This has been awesome. And we'll put all the uh, recommendations for your readings in the notes. Uh, and we'll uh, see you around, Jason. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. All right, cool.